The personal computer has become the most ubiquitous machine in modern times. This machine was once a luxury where only big business and scientific institutions had any use for them. Today, however, the computer has worked its way into the homes of the average person. Despite this, most users are secretly terrified of the computer. Countless individuals leave even the most simple and trivial computer problems to experts who charge handsome fees for minor fixes. The purpose of this video is to teach the common computer user how to operate and maintain their computer, along with general tips for troubleshooting common computer problems. So, sit back and let us teach you how to maintain and operate your personal computer. First, let's quickly examine the components that comprise the typical PC. The external parts of the computer are the keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Most people are familiar with these parts because these are the input and output devices we use to communicate with the computer. But inside the computer tend to be less familiar parts. Let's start off with the processor. The purpose of the processor is to process information. It is the brain of the computer. The processor always has a fan and heat sink. The purpose of this combination is to keep the processor cool enough to operate. The heat sink often looks like a metal porcupine and is made of aluminum or copper. The average computer contains at least three fans and one of these fans is dedicated to the processor. The other two fans are used to move hot air out of your computer case and power supply. Next you have the RAM memory. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. RAM is a temporary form of memory, which means all of the information stored in RAM memory will be lost once the computer is shut down. This is the hard drive. This is the computer's permanent memory, so it does not lose the data recorded on it when the computer is powered down, unlike RAM. The hard drive can also store hundreds of times more data than RAM. It is this device that contains your personal files and software that you use every day. Then there's the motherboard. This is often a huge circuit with chips, plugs, and wires. The motherboard is the heart of the computer, since its purpose is to bring all of the separate components into a single functioning computer. To find the motherboard, simply locate the RAM and processor, which directly plug in to the motherboard. Next is the video card, or graphics card. This card receives information from the motherboard and converts it to color data that is eventually sent to your monitor. Many computers have onboard video cards, which means that the graphics unit comes as part of the motherboard rather than a separate card in one of the card slots. The video card may have a standard video plug or an HD video plug. Here is the sound card. The sound card controls the computer's audio input and output. On the card's front, you will find many colored headphone jacks. The two main plugs of concern are pink and green. Pink is where a microphone is plugged into, while speakers are plugged into light green jacks. Like the video card, the audio unit has also been built in to some motherboards. Next, we have what is called the power supply. The function of the power supply is to convert the voltage coming from the wall socket to something closer to the needs of the computer. It is easily identified by its dedicated fans and many wires. Here is the optical drive, which is usually a DVD player. Many computers these days have DVD players that can also create DVDs. To burn a DVD is to record data onto a DVD disc. And if your drive is capable of writing onto DVDs, you will find words like rewritable, RW, and recorder on the front panel of the DVD drive. On the outside of the computer's case, you will find a number of different plugs. The most common socket is called a USB socket. These USB sockets have become the standard plug that computers use to communicate to peripheral devices like cameras, internet, iPods, and even keyboards. Other sockets often found on the outside of the computer are the keyboard and mouse plugs. These two plugs have long been used to connect keyboards and mice to the computer but they are slowly being phased out with USB keyboards and mice. The last two commonly seen jacks are phone and ethernet ports. The two telephone jacks, which belong to the telephone modem, 
uses the telephone to connect to the internet. One of the jacks, usually labeled wall or line, should be plugged into the phone jack in the wall, while the modem's other phone jack, labeled phone, is connected to a telephone. The use of phone modems to connect to the internet has certainly declined in recent years. The next plug of interest is the Ethernet plug, which often looks like a wider version of the phone jack. The plug is used to connect to high-speed internet. Often, your internet service provider will give you a high-speed modem designed to plug in to the Ethernet port. On the front of your computer, one may find many plugs of various sizes. These are memory card slots designed for the memory cards used in many devices, like cameras. Now that you know its parts, let's begin. The most basic unit of storage in the world of computers is called the file. A computer file may contain any kind of information, such as music, video games, text, and movies. The average computer contains thousands of computer files. Some are small, some are large, some are trivial, and some are vital. Each file has a name, and this is called the file name. Each file name has two parts, which are divided by a period. The first part is the file's main title, while the second part of the file name, which is called the file extension, describes what kind of information the file contains. For instance, MP3 is certainly the most famous file extension. An MP3 is a kind of computer file that contains high quality audio and is widely used in portable devices like iPods. The main title of an MP3 file usually contains the author and song name, while the extension is always MP3. There are many different types of file extensions but commonly encountered extensions are EXE, MP3, JPEG, ZIP, TXT, and AVI. EXE is a software extension and means that this file is a computer program like a browser or a video game. JPEG is a commonly used format for images. ZIP files are compressed packages that themselves can contain many smaller files. TXT stands for text and therefore indicates that the file contains text. AVI is a common extension for movies. Computer files come in all different sizes. Some files, like AVI files, are large because computer files containing movies tend to be large. Other files, like the TXT files, which contain only text, tend to be small. File sizes and everything else in the computer world are measured in bytes. The byte represents a single basic unit of digital storage. The sizes of files tends to be displayed using notation rather than the whole number. The number of bytes are often listed as a small number paired together with a capital letter. The capitalized letter on the right denotes the size of the units while the number on the left describes how many units. Let me explain. And pay attention carefully, because this is important. Listed on the screen, it's a series of capitalized letters and the amount they denote. K is for kilo, which means 1,000. M is for mega, and means 1 million. G is for giga, and equals 1 billion. And T is for tera, and denotes 1 trillion. So, if you're perusing the internet and are about to download an MP3 file that says 5.5M or 5.5MB, you know that this file is 5.5 million bytes